Running to an emergency. <laughs> Welcome to Antarctica, where medical logistics is taken to a whole new level, and ultrasound makes you sleep easier a lot. Welcome to Union Glacier, located in the Ellsworth mountain range on the edge of the Antarctic Plateau. Welcome to Union Glacier Camp, your home for the next two months. Welcome to my home. Mikasa, Isukasa. But before we get too comfortable in Union Glacier, I'd like to take us a little bit further south. I'd like to head down to 90 degrees latitude to the South Pole. I accompanied a group of clients to the South Pole, um, and they were going down to the South Pole to attend Bruce and Sheila's wedding and have a little bit of a celebration. This is me ridiculously excited about having my feet on the ice at the South Pole, <laughs> with an ultrasound machine around my neck, scanning the ceremonial pole, <laughs> having a little bit of fun. Um, this, this ultrasound machine is the Philips Lumify, and it became my friend for the next two months and saved my bacon numerous occasions. And I'm going to be telling you about one of those occasions now. Um, during the wedding preparation of that morning, I got a telephone call from base, and there was a medevac. One of the clients doing the last degree, which is skiing 110 kilometers, or about 67 miles, from 89 degrees latitude to 90 degrees latitude. Um, his name was Jack, and Jack became acutely short of breath and couldn't continue. So we jumped on our trusty DC-3, and hopped on over to the temporary camp that they had set up on the Antarctic Plateau. We bundled Jack into the aeroplane and headed back to the South Pole, where uh, I was faced with a diagnostic dilemma in the most remote location on Earth. So Jack was sick, okay? He, his history was consistent with a pneumonia, um, but we need to keep in mind that three days prior, he had ascended 2,700 meters from 700 meters at Union Glacier Camp to a physiological altitude of 3,400 meters at the South Pole. So I had high altitude pulmonary edema high on my radar. He'd also traveled a long distance on many plane rides to get to where he was, so PE was on my list of differentials. Now, should Jack have high altitude pulmonary edema, part of the management of that is to descend. Um, due to cost restrictions of flights in Antarctica being very expensive to fly from Union Glacier to the South Pole, um, we would have to have the whole wedding party get on the plane and descend with us that night. Union Glacier is located over 1,000 kilometers from the South Pole and it takes about five and a half hours to six hours to fly there. Now, these medical logistics questions that, you know, lots is involved in making the decisions. Uh, the bottom line for me as a doctor is my patient, okay? But a lot of other things come into play, like weather. The pilot came up to me and said, Gaynor, as we landed after picking him up, he said, Gaynor, we have a really small weather window tonight that makes it, you know, we, we need to actually leave very soon. You need to make your decision pronto, okay? Tomorrow, however, our weather window is really safe. You can go, okay? Um, and the other factor that comes into play is, you know, Bruce and Sheila have saved a very long time 
had spent a lot of money to be at the South Pole, and they would really like to celebrate their wedding at the South Pole with their buddies, okay? Um, so I was sitting there and, and asking myself the question of whether, you know, what decision am I gonna land up with? Should I stay or should I go now? Should I descend to the safety of Union Glacier, or am I able to stay at the South Pole and can Bruce and Sheila celebrate their wedding? So to make my decision, I picked up my ultrasound probe and popped it on his chest and breathed a massive but silent sigh of relief when I found dry, dry lungs, excluding high altitude pulmonary edema. I then had a quick look at his heart and didn't find any um, suggestions of elevated right heart pressures. I had a little look at his leg veins and didn't see any signs of DVT, um, which significantly reduced the, the chance of pulmonary embolus. And so I made the decision to spend the night at the South Pole looking after Jack while Bruce and Sheila and co had a, had a great party that evening. Um, and Arctica has been a simulation station for development of ultrasound protocols currently used at the International Space Station. It's been my lifelong dream to put my feet on the ice in Antarctica and to feel weightlessness in space. Never stop dreaming. Go boldly where no man has gone before. My name is Gaynor Prince. If you have any questions at all, please find me at the Sim House over lunchtime. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name's Ian. Gaynor is taking you to new heights. I'm going to bring you right down to a new level. Let's roll the video. If it works. So I'm going to tell you my story of how we modified an ultrasound to work at pressure. Why? Because it turns out ultrasound is the perfect tool for hyperbaric medicine and diving. Two mechanisms of decompression illness. Firstly, a rapid ascent causing pulmonary barotrauma. So let's demonstrate this with one of my registrars and some balloons. Boyle's law tells us that as we ascend, volume of gas expands. And like your alveoli, the balloons blow up. Now that air can be entrained. If it's peripheral, you'll get a pneumothorax. Ultrasound, brilliant. If it's central, goes to the neck. Worst case scenario, cerebral artery gas embolism. Gas in the brain. Second mechanism, inert gas uptake from diving. You open a bottle of champagne, bubbles are come out of solution. Here we can see them in the right heart. What about other forms of diving? Saturation diving. These guys live in an extreme environment, breathing mixed gases with helium. Come on, Ozzy, second half, Tito. Come on, come on, come on, come on Ozzy. <laughs> Now's the chance, get into it. The Rugby World Cup. It's quicker to get a man to the moon than they get these guys than get these guys out. So if they've got renal colic, simple renal colic or appendicitis, biliary colic, or free air under the diaphragm, it's pretty handy to know. But putting an ultrasound in a chamber isn't without problems. I had to persuade ultrasound companies to give me an ultrasound. And they were a bit concerned something like this might happen. Not ideal. The pressure effects. Also, 
turns out lithium batteries combust under pressure. So a power source is important. Bring on Dave to demonstrate our deluge system. An oxygen-rich environment is not the best place for machines. <laughs> it would be a shame not to do that again. You never tire of things like that. So look, I'm just going to wrap this up now. We modified a machine. So let's take it now to our chamber and look at a hyperbaric ultrasound emergency. Which is not. Captain Lippy, come with the curve linear probe. Certainly, Professor Gosro, I'll wind up the frequency. <laughs> Thank you. 